Hi and welcome. I'm Naomi and thank you for taking a few minutes to check out my new painting, The Stone of Unity. I'm very excited to share how this painting has come into being and in the links below I'm going to write a full description about the meaning and the ideas in this painting but it's been a very interesting artistic journey, um, esoteric learning and spiritual revelation about how it's actually come to be and it's taken well over a year to paint on two sides of the country of Australia through various random coincidences coincidences actually happening so um, I'm very excited about that and I'd love to share how these paintings actually come into process there are so many different um, links and things that happened with this piece out of my conscious um, awareness necessarily at the time but as I've gone through and then I've discovered more things so that makes it even more exciting and profound to me from the fact that I was very involved in my um, esoteric learning studies. I was interested in the number 13, which translates actually into love and unity. Then I discovered this amazing rock formation out back of New South Wales, took a lovely photo of it, thinking one day it would be a fa fabulous painting. But when I just decided a year later to incorporate it in this painting, I had no idea how significant the word stone would be and how it connected with the word unity and how unity was the number 13, 1 and 3 in connection. So in all it was very very fascinating and I had no idea that the connection point of the angle on this rock was exactly 53 degrees which is the literal Hebrew number of the word unity. So that was incredibly exciting. But it was also even more exciting that when I took the photo, I had to actually stand at exactly the right angle to make that angle 53 degrees, which it is in my photographic reference. And even more exciting was that the esoteric Pythagorean triangle, at the point of conception at the vertical line and the hypotenuse, the angle is actually 53 degrees. So there just seem to be so many amazing spiritual coincidences aligned with painting this painting, which had me very, very excited. So stay with me now as I show you how I actually did paint it. Welcome back. So now let's have a look at the time-lapse video of how I've actually gone about creating this piece and talk it through step by step and see how I've arrived at the final conclusion. I've been very interested in the number 13. Now that's the card of death in the tarot. So I wanted to explore that idea a little bit more. So I had a stencil that had 13 turrets um, in the square and the square also is the cube of space in Kabbalah. So I was very interested in this concept. So you can see I've actually done a stencil in turquoise blue green, which is actually the color on the tarot card of death. Now I've started to do a pour, pouring the sky, um, where you use liquid paints and you pour flat. So I'm just spraying the colors with a little atomizer and letting the colors run freely. And then I'm going to do the um, landscape as well. But what I didn't expect was that the stencil underneath, when it's dry, has really come forward beautifully. I thought that maybe the pore would just obliterate it completely. And I was sort of happy maybe that it was going to do that. But at the finish, it's actually turned out better than I imagined with the stencil coming through the sky. As you can see here, still fairly rough, but I really loved it. And I thought, oh, I think I really want to incorporate this whole idea of the um, 13 number in the landscape now more consciously than before when I was just thinking about well I might just do this lovely landscape. So now here you can see me actually painting or with the paw and blowing uh, um, the landscape. Now I've started to draw the rocks into the um, area and now I'm using my collage technique to paper in the rock shapes and you can see the picture just to the side that what the actual rocks look like from my photographic reference. These are actually rocks in New South Wales. Um, just amazing, incredible rocks and I might talk about that a little bit later. But so now I've just started to get the rough paper shapes into 
and then I've also decided to paper over the poured part of the landscape. Wasn't really happy with how it was looking. So I thought oh, I'll use some of my collage pieces and build that up a little bit more. Uh, so it's starting to take a little bit of shape. So now I'm building up some lighter tones of paper um, in the rocks to start to build up a little bit more 3D definition. Usually start with the darks and build up to the lights. But it doesn't really matter which way you go, um, the paper just keeps layering and now you can see just the finished first layer of the paper. Now I've started to add some linear detail just to outline the definite shapes and designs and patterns in the rocks, roughly, not too precisely, but just giving it a bit more definition and shape as to where it's actually going. So now I'm starting to put on some lighter greys and lighter tones on top of the paper with paint to get a little bit more texture and a detail into the colour and the patterns of the rocks using a palette knife. Most of the time I will paint with actually a palette knife, sometimes a brush for finer detail, but I love the palette knife texture on top of the paper which gives you all this beautiful texture that you can take advantage of. So looking very quick here but I've been doing a lot of painting, putting in tones, shapes, details, patterns, colours, building up the rock to have a much more realistic feel. And it's a process of, you know, going back and forward with the tones and the shapes till you feel that you've achieved the result that you want. So um, it doesn't always happen right the first time, so you have to necessarily go back and adjust and adjust this piece, adjust that piece, fiddle here, fiddle there. <laughs> Looks very quick, but um, trust me, it actually takes a long, long time. <laughs> But they're starting to shape shape and I'm starting to feel uh, quite happy with how they're uh, progressing. Okay, so we're carrying on. I'm building up a bit more colour and pattern and shape now. Decided to warm the rocks up a little bit. I was working on a lot of grey tones before but now I'm sort of adding in some warmer sort of browner sort of colours and trying to define the shapes and in the rock a little bit more. So I've gone through that bit and then I've had a look and I've decided that I thought the sky was too unresolved. It looked a little maybe just a bit too messy for want of a better word. So I've decided to brush with paint over the sky and soften it down and blend the uh, cube of space with my 13 turrets into it a little bit more in a subtle format and just to even out the sky tones, make them look a little bit more turquoise and soft and lighter. So I've done that and then I decided that the horizon line on the landscape wasn't quite balanced enough so I'm building that up a little bit more in the background just to give it a little bit more of an uh, even fall through the distance there and making it feel um, like it works with the rocks a little bit better. I'm far happier with the sky now, um, it looks softer, looks blended, I like the shapes in the sky, I've highlighted a few of them a little bit more. So now I've got my Gouta pens and I've started to create line work and pattern in the background, creating some detail that you can see that's already in the paper, but really highlighting that and bringing it out. And I've also started to do that on the rocks, drawing in the edges and highlights and surface um, patterns to really make it just sort of jump out a bit more. Now I've decided to put the constellation of Orion in the top corner of the painting. Um, very significant actually. Um, so I didn't want it to stand out too much. So I've just used the template and then actually put the, put the um, shapes in as dots or like stars as a constellation. And I'm using my Gouda pens to um, apply those. And then I'm going to just connect up the dots with the pens just to suggest the constellation without sort of making it too obvious in the um, sky. So here I'm just joining all the dots as we say um, to create that constellation there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So then down on the other side of the um, painting I decided that we would have the moon um, low on the horizon to complement Orion in the sky. 
So here's my final painting, The Stone of Unity. And as discussed earlier, all the amazing, exciting coincidences and how I've come to paint it have now been shared with you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have, please like and subscribe and check out all my other videos on different paintings that I have painted and keep a lookout for new pieces that are going to be coming soon as well. Thank you for taking the time and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Bye for now.